Hey guys, this is John Burton of Carbot Animations. Today I'm just going to do a uh, video tutorial on Flash CS 5.5. This is the program I use to animate and create StarCrafts. Um, hopefully I do a good job. Uh, I was a little bit nervous making tutorial, but then I was like, okay, I'm just going to just going to get out there and do it. Hopefully it's good enough for you guys. Anyone who's a beginner in Flash, uh, I'm just going to go through the the tools at first and then um, later on in the weeks I'll I'll do some animation tips and tricks and things that I know um, again I'm not a professional uh, I aspire to be one and uh, so yeah hopefully this video helps so when you open flash uh, you'll get a menu just like this I again I don't know what everything does I just click on this one action script 3.0 so let's do that and uh, at very first sight, you will get a stage, which is this. This is the stage. This is your camera view. This is your screen, or this is everything. Anything outside this white box, it will not be seen in your, your cartoon or your drawing if you're just going to draw. Um, so, yeah, here's all the tools at the side on the right. I, I don't think it, it changes too much throughout Flash versions but uh, I know five to six hasn't really changed that much so should be exactly right here timeline is down here and timeline tools are also down here as well um, and then you got of course your file and your edit and everything up here um, and the open flash files will be lining up along here but anyway so we got a stage here uh, under properties tab You'll see these settings. Again, I don't touch too many of them. FPS is frames per second. Um, 24 frames a second, I think, is, is just the standard of what it starts at. Uh, and the size 550 by 400, that's your stage, your resolution that you're working in. I always work in 1280 by 720. Okay. And my frames per second is 24, but I do do it on twos, which means I do every other frame. So it's pretty much 12 frames a second. The reason why I have it on 24 is because certain actions, I need 24 frames a second. So for those moments, I actually do every frame. Um, it gives a good flexibility. Okay, so again, I'm going to be teaching you uh, just the tools for today, the basics. And then later on, animation, how I do animation and flash, and, and so on. I think the, uh, so these first three tools are all cursors, and it'll give you the options or the properties for the stage. But uh, if we go to the tool I use first and foremost is the paintbrush. And in the paintbrush tool, you will see the properties that are now changed. And also these extra toolbar down here changes as well. And that'll change for any tool I go on for the most part okay so under uh, properties for paintbrush we got the color it's also down here as well under the paint bucket okay and uh, we got smoothing I'll explain that in just a second and uh, so in color you can you know choose the color you, can also, you know there's other colors there too that's in the again in the corner um, and you can change the alpha which means the transparency of the color you can adjust that there. You can move it or, or type it in, whatever is easiest for you. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just draw quickly uh, a Marine. Okay. So here's a Marine. For all you Marine lovers out there. There we go. Da -da. Oh. There's a marine. Okay, and if you're looking closely, as you notice while I was drawing, um, you can kind of see that flash slightly alters the, the strokes of the of the lines. That's because of this smoothing here. It's uh, vectorized lines, which means it will not lose quality. So if I go ahead and upscale this, it's not going to get pixelated at all, and, and so on. Um, so that's why that's what vectorize 
in a nutshell means. Um, so I can go ahead, if I go back to Paintbrush Tool, and adjust the smoothing to, to say zero. Let's go to an extreme. And it will not, it won't really affect my lines at all. It'll, it'll keep them as I draw them. Some people prefer no smoothing. If I go scale to 100%, 100%, then you'll see it, you know, adjusted even more as you. I don't recommend 100. I actually didn't discover this option until like six months into using Flash. So I would say, uh, like, I, I heard 30 or 31 or something like that is a good number. I'm used to 50 now, though. So I'm just going to keep it at 50. You choose whatever's comfortable. Uh, so after you draw your lines, you can also draw lines with, sorry, the, the, uh, pencil tool which the pencil tool color is actually different than the paint tool color um, you'll kind of find out why later on in the uh, tutorial here pencil the difference is the the line thickness will never change it'll always stay the same so that might be something you'll want to use I've been thinking about using it but I haven't really I don't know it's whatever is more comfortable for you uh, then again, you can change the color here. Same thing with alpha and everything else. Uh, and the stroke size there. And going back to the paintbrush, I forgot about stroke size is down here. Size of the brush. And the type of brush. And this here is uh, pressure. So if you're using, if you're using a, uh, a tablet like I am, which is a, a wake, uh, bamboo Wacom, or Wacom, I don't know how you pronounce it, tablet, uh, then it'll sense the pressure of what you're pushing down at. So if I push down harder, it'll be thicker. If I don't, it'll be thinner, as you can see. So that's very helpful. I use that a lot. OK, so those are the two main line drawing tools. Um, if we go now to filling in those lines, which is right here, the paint bucket tool. Uh, the paint bucket tool is governed by the paint bucket color thing. So we can color the marine. Let's color them green. I've never made a green marine before. There we go. Green marine. Okay, so if we color them, let's just go back for a second. You'll notice that as I colored, this gap here didn't fill in and you might ask why or you might be coloring and it might not fill in at all like now and you might be like oh why isn't it why isn't it coloring uh, and the reason being is because of right here this is the gap size tolerance um, so it pretty much says you know don't ignore gaps at all ignore Small gaps, ignore medium gaps, ignore large gaps. This is all relevant to how close you're zoomed in to the, the drawing. But uh, so we're at a, the gap right here is actually this tiny little thing. It's tiny. A lot of times you don't, you don't see it. So that's why this thing is so helpful because you, it, you can't find the gaps at times. That is my cat. Um, so here I'm going to go with close small gaps and it'll color in now. Um, if I went to a larger, close large gaps, you'll see that it closed this gap here. It didn't fill it in. It ignored it. Um, so it, it, it's not too big of a problem. Uh, you just choose the one that you think is best suited for whatever. And uh, yeah, there you go. Let's put in the helmet. Is that right? Uh, okay. This is kind of weird. I'm going to put on the blue. Oh, that's like old school color. Light blue. All right. So there, there you go. That's how you fill in. Uh, again, that's very useful. I didn't understand it at first. I had no idea what was going on and why I couldn't color, but uh, that should help. So again, uh, text. This will all change. Here's your options over here. Font size, font type style color yeah everything spacing even it's actually a lot of options 
Here's uh, lines. <clears throat> if you draw straight lines, um, it's governed by the uh, color of the, the pencil. Oh, the cow, that's thick. Adjust the stroke here. Uh, and I'll show a little, a neat little, uh, let me change the color. So when you are making lines or even, uh, here's a rectangle tool. Or oval, you can change it. But we're going to do rectangle. You'll see that the outline is the pencil color, and the fill-in is the paint bucket. So that is the that is why they're different. I don't. Um, they govern different colors, I guess. Uh, but you can always adjust lines with the transforming tool. So I can adjust these lines as long as I. I hover uh, over it and you'll see a curve line next to your cursor. You can adjust the line like this. Or the corners, you can move. It'll show like a right angle when you do that. Um, you can also adjust paint stroke lines as well. It's a little bit different. It doesn't move the entire line. It moves one side of the line, as you can see. Um, or you can, so if there's any line you don't like, you want adjusted, that's the way to that's the way to do it the transforming tool I think you can yes you can do that as well to shapes okay uh, lasso is the lasso select you can actually right click with any one of these I believe yep and envelope which is another it goes under free transforming again and it gives you like another way to distort uh, an object. Oops. So you can mess around with it all sorts of ways. Um, and then the, the original way is, of course, these right here. And you can, putting the cursor near the, the corner, you can rotate. If you hold shift, it'll hold to each angle. If you hold shift while scaling, it won't distort it all. If you don't, you can distort it, and so on. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so the, the difference between this black cursor and white cursor is that when you select it, you can see each point that has been drawn by you, uh, and you can adjust it that way as well. It's just another way to adjust lines, as you can see. Um, Maybe I should zoom in a little bit more to show. But yeah, just another way to adjust lines. It's actually not bad of a program to just draw in. It's not as flexible as Photoshop, but I don't know. It's like an advanced paint, I guess. Most of these tools are just like paint tools. So magnifying glass, zoom out. You can zoom in actually just by boxing it. Or you can click here to zoom in. Whatever's preferred. Uh, eyedropper tool, catch the color. Um, this ink bottle tool actually will make an outline of whatever. You, oh, jeez, whatever you uh, fill in, I guess is the word. It'll outline it. So I have used it. It's not a very common tool, but I have used it. Um, these other tools is uh, there's a lot more explained to do, like the bone tool, the three D tool, and things like that. But those are those are pretty much oh, and the eraser, of course, which is erases stuff. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, again, these other tools kind of require a little bit more explaining while you're drawing. Actually, I just discovered this the other day, uh, which is fairly obvious but I don't know I just never did it if you hold shift while you're using like say the paintbrush tool um, it'll draw on a straight line it'll still have that like paintbrush feel to it but it'll be a straight line so that's that's helpful as well uh, I think that's it for the tools again with every tool I like the way I, I didn't learn from anyone flash I kind of taught myself uh, just by experimenting. Um, so I would say get your feet wet, experiment, 
you'll see with every tool you click on and use properties over here and also a little bit more um, variables down here that you can use and, and, and try out. So I think that's the best way to learn, but uh, hopefully this tutorial helped you get started um, uh, with just the tools. Now I'm going to go into the, the timeline actually. Uh, the timeline is down here as I mentioned earlier. The timeline, uh, <clears throat> each one of these squares is a frame, however only have one frame at the moment. Um, so the way this works, I think you can right click, yeah you can right click and insert blank keyframe or insert insert frame or whatever and uh, I'll explain the difference in just a second. The hotkey for this though is much easier. It's F5 to insert or to lengthen a frame and then F6 to insert a new a new a new frame. So usually when you uh, when you press uh, F6 when you add a new frame it'll copy the old frame over well whatever's behind it. So if I do it again here it'll be blank ones. So pretty much for each of these, let's, let's go ahead and erase this. Pressing F5 to lengthen each frame. Again, I usually do things in twos. Unless I want something very fast. And so pretty much here, I'm just going to draw a stick figure for the sake of... I don't know. So here's my stick figure. And as you no notice, you scroll along the down... Uh, along the down... Along the... Uh, the, the time frame he'll disappear you'll want to see your last frame so if you go to onion skin which is right here if you put your cursor over it it will say onion skin click it and you'll see a faded version of what you last drew or in the last frame these are adjustable you can say how many frames you want to see back and how many frames you want to see forward it's default at two it's actually good default anyway so this guy is going to be I don't know moving so I you know drawing like this I'm doing a stick figure because I don't want this tutorial to be too long but you'll see here that he start to he's starting to move so Anyway, so that's kind of how you start to animate. Play buttons down here, and I didn't finish the rest, but you can also do uh, this is a loop. And again, you adjust the loop like this with these notches here, and if you press play, it'll it'll loop what you just did. Okay. Um, Frames per second is also down here, and how many seconds you've animated is right here. Uh, I hope this tutorial helped, guys. Again, this is just the basics. Um, I will get into more uh, later on uh, as the weeks uh, go on. But uh, hopefully this will get you started if you never use Flash, if you're confused while opening it. And I'll do another tutorial on uh, animating and animating tips, and I'll go more thoroughly into actual animating so I hope this again I hope this thing this tutorial helped thanks for watching and I'll leave you with a